Hey guys, welcome to What I Ate Wednesday. I am starting my day with my usual granola. Um, just plain granola and then I have some craisins, dried cranberries on it. And then I also put in what you'll see in the clip in the center is hemp seeds. And then along kind of the edges is ground up flax seed and oatmeal. So it just basically turns into a powder. So just to add a little bit more bulk and kind of get this added health benefits. I was gonna add chia, but usually those then stick in my teeth, so that's why I didn't do that. I have a day off today, so I'm gonna relax. I'm meeting up with my friend to go dog walking with her dog and her baby, and then just having a nice relaxing day. I'm excited for dinner. I found a really good recipe making a meat loaf with um, nuts and quinoa, so I'm excited. I hope it turns out. We walked for about an hour and a half, so I've worked up a little bit of an appetite, but it's too early to have lunch, so I'm just having a snack um, with some celery with a little bit of peanut butter um, in the groove. So lunch time now, and I'm going to be making egg wraps. So the ingredients that I'm going to be using are red onions, red peppers, and radishes. We're going with the red purple theme today, <laughs> I guess. So I'm just going to fry these up and then I don't know how radishes are gonna be cooked up, fried like that, but we shall see. Um, and then cook the eggs after. Cooking all of this first, then I'm going to fry up these eggs or the scrambled eggs and start putting it all together in our wraps. I added some salsa and I have a piece of lettuce and then just putting the egg on top. And then I have the pepper jack daya cheese. So just sprinkling a little bit of that on top as well. And now I get to sit back and enjoy the wrap. I'm gonna be starting to make dinner now, the quinoa walnut meatloaf. And it takes about an hour and a half in the oven. So make sure you start this early. I'll put the link down below well, the recipe that I'm adapting this from. Um, but as you guys know, I always change a couple of things anyways. I have already cooked some quinoa and then we're gonna be adding um, three quarters of a cup into the food processor. I only have a small food processor. A bigger one is on my birthday wish list. <laughs> Pretty much the only item on my birthday wish list. So hopefully I'll get one, we will see. Um, so I did a half a cup of quinoa and it makes, I don't know, like a cup and a half of cooked quinoa. So I'll just set this aside after and I'll use it for another meal. Um, and then a cup of walnuts. I'm using about three quarter cup walnuts and then a quarter cup of soy nuts just because that's what I have. <laughs> And then now we're supposed to have two cups of mushrooms. So I don't think that's going to fit all in there, but I'll do it in little batches. Hmm, I need a new food processor. So basically you're just going to pulse it until it gets kind of like a ground beef meat-like texture. So it's already starting. Darn, I don't think I'll be able to do this all in one bit. That's frustrating. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of this out, add some more mushrooms, do half of it, and then mix the other half. So this is what it looks like now that it's done in the food processor. Um, the soy nuts weren't the best, but honestly I didn't have any more um, walnuts, and I already went out to get other ingredients, and I was like, ah, oh, I'm not gonna go out and go back out to get what I missed the first time. So that's why I did that. So now basically we're just throwing in all the rest of the ingredients, so I have um, celery, uh, one stalk, and carrots, and they're finely chopped, and so it makes just under a cup um, combined. A quarter cup of craisins, or dried cranberries, and a cup of oats, and then I have some fresh rosemary and basil that we're going to add, and then some soy sauce, and then I was able to track down some vegan Worcestershire sauce because real one has, I think, anchovy oil or anchovy something in it, or just anchovies. I know Annie's does a vegan one, but I couldn't find it. So I went to, a, this is one of the things I had to try down, um, and got, yes, this one, what is it? The Wizards brand. So, I'm gonna use that. So then we're gonna do a tablespoon of this and the soy sauce, and then a variety of other spices. We have cayenne, garlic, thyme, and sage. It's all here, so now we're just going to mix it 
all together and I think I may need to use my hands and just mix it all so it thoroughly mixes. Um, but then after that point we're going to put it all into this um, meat loaf pan or just loaf pan um, that I've lined with parchment paper and then um, sprayed a little bit of oil on it. I realized I forgot the onion. I tasted it and it tasted fine. Not that amazing. So then I reread all the ingredients. I'm like, oh right, the onion. So I've added that in now, and because I really like onions. Um, it did say it had an egg or like a flax egg, but it's really moist. Now I get that it has to cook for an hour and a half, but I don't know, like it's it's really moist. So I'm gonna skip that, be brave, and we'll see how that works. This recipe was just on someone's blog. Usually I use like allrecipes.com and look at only ones that have like really good reviews and then look at people's suggestions that they've used. This one obviously didn't have any, so I don't actually know. I'm hoping it's good, but yeah, usually I use reviews that have lots of people saying things. So I'm just gonna finish this. It's hard doing this with my hand. Um, but just patting it that in there. Finally, that's done. So I'm now gonna put it in the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour and a half. I'll probably check in or check on it in about an hour and 15 and then put a little um, glaze on top. It's been cooking for an hour and 15 minutes. So now I'm going to add the topping, which is three or well, maybe just under like two and a half tablespoons of ketchup a tablespoon and a half of the Worcestershire sauce and then a little bit of garlic salt. So we're just gonna spread that all over on top and then we're gonna pop it in the oven for about another 10 minutes. And then it will be the moment of truth if it works or not or if it completely crumbles. <laughs> we took it out of the oven and left it for 10 minutes to set. Ooh, let's see. Looks pretty good. This look like. Oh, that's pretty cool. It looks like we used a whole bunch of the veggie ground beef, but there's really not. So exciting. All right. It is finally done. Takes an, I mean, I guess that's normal for a meatloaf. I didn't, I don't make meatloaf really, so I did not know. But it actually turned out. Oh, isn't that really nice? But now we have to taste it. Now is the true test to see how it is. But it stays up or like stays in its form, so that's really good. It's actually really delicious. You like it too? Good, yeah. Does it taste like real meatloaf? Uh, no, but it's good. It reminds me of, um, no, the spices remind me of tofurkey or something almost. Oh. If I didn't tell you what's in it, if you forgot, would you know what the ingredients are? Mm, tastes like quinoa. What? It does oh. not. Quinoa but walnuts? It's got the consistency. And the walnuts, got the, yeah, it's got the crunch in there, which is nice. Well, well, I don't think it tastes like that, but anyways, I'm actually really impressed. And it wasn't, I think I would do more chopping in the food processor, because also I chopped all the the onions, well no, the onions I didn't because I forgot them at the end, but um, the carrots and the celery by hand, and that when my hand was getting tired, so I would just do everything in the food processor. And if I had a bigger food processor, not even listening, uh, <laughs> then it would also go easier, because then you could just throw it in, you don't have to do it in two separate batches. Anyways, <laughs> I'm really impressed. Um, and yeah, the baking time, an hour and a half. I mean, I stay in the house, but I don't have to be like watching it, so. I'm really impressed. I think it's really good, actually. I would definitely make it with all walnuts, not my weird pine nuts. But again, it does actually make it a little bit of a crunch. Um, I'm so happy. <laughs> it tastes really good. I'm ending my evening with some tea. Uh, it's just steeping in there. It is the David's Tea birthday cake. And as I poured this, I realized, um, or I poured the milk, I didn't put almond milk in the recipe. And I specifically went out and got our original almond milk because I have the vanilla one. I was like, oh, I don't know how vanilla is going to go in my uh, <laughs> meatloaf. So I specifically got it and I forgot it. But it, honestly, it, it held its shape. It was moist enough. But... I think it was because I used 
well, it called for cremini or porcini mushrooms, I think. Um, and I use button mushrooms, so maybe those have a higher water content to begin with. So maybe that's the reason. Anyways, it worked fine, but I would have chosen my vanilla one that I like better. But I was just, yeah, I got that specifically for the recipe. But then obviously I'll still drink it otherwise, but... Oh. Anyways, but it still turned out really well. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, as you saw, we had it with corn on the cob and a salad. So that's going to be it today. I'm just going to enjoy my birthday cake tea. And, yeah, we will see you guys next week. Bye.